It's The Q. Here is your host, John Furrier. Hi, I'm John Furrier, the co-host of The Q with David Floyer, CTO of Wikibon, also Cube uh, host as co-host as well. We are here live on the ground at VMware's event. And uh, David, we heard uh, VMware roll out one of their big announcements. All the press corps was here, top analysts. Pat Gelsinger brought two customers, Jeffrey Moore, Quinton uh, from, from the New York Times, big writer. They rolled it out, they're pumping out heavy. Big announcement, very foundational, um, very geeky, so it's not a lot of pomp and circumstance other than bringing the core people together. Um, big vSphere 6 announcement, got a lot of NSX, vVols in there, vSAN, vCloud Air, all this is going on. Break it down for us, what the hell's going on with VMware? <laughs> is this a land grab for the software defined data center? What's your analysis? Well, uh, I thought the initial present, uh, initial discussions that they had today on what disruption was were very interesting. It, it, if you can make, if you can release resources, that's a good thing. And that's what VMware did at the beginning. They took cycles and made them, made them available to other people. And they're trying to do the same thing with uh, NSX, with networks, and they're trying to do the same thing with uh, networks, uh, with uh, storage as well. So it's a very ambitious objective they have, and it's a very worthwhile objective. Um, are they going to succeed? This is a very, very ambitious program that they've got. Are they going to succeed? Well, the question is, if are the benefits that people are going to get from this better utilization worth the increasing cost of all these layers of software which are coming in. And that to me is the key question. The question is how the can, how will they consume that? And yeah. that's going to be interesting because there's a lot of variety of different EMC. You got a little bit of this, now you got VMware. So all that's kind of coming together. How do you make sense of that? Uh, absolutely. Well, let's go down some of the things, for example. Uh, I mean, some of the things, they are well ahead and really doing very well. So NSX itself is really good technology and providing that across a private cloud, a public cloud, and a hybrid cloud is good news. There's, there are many, many people who will want to do that. Long term, the question is though, is that the right place or do you want to be able to keep your NSX or, pri or, or your virtual cloud or virtual communication separate from the other things and have that going across a broader range of things? I'm not sure whether you will want to tie it into vSphere as your only foundation. You might want to put it on your open stack as well. So there's some, some interesting extensions I think they'll need to make to NSX. Um, looking at some of the other things, uh, good announcements on vSAN, uh, good announcements on vVols. To be honest, they should have been two or three years ahead of where they are now. I mean, they're, they're really- They're late to the game. They're late to the game. Uh, I'm sure they'll do a good job, but they were definitely held back by EMC. And they put more resources into making the old stuff work. Why were they held back by EMC? More of a legacy federation yeah, the, command? Yeah, the, the emphasis being on getting the old uh, VMAXs and everything else to work with it. Instead of going full head and saying, Again, how can we disrupt this? How can we add value? So that was a that was a boat anchor for them, kind of dragging them along. Yes, yeah, but but now it's out, and I think it's going to be flying well uh, with vSAN, and 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 vVols is still a long way off, but those are simplifications. Those are ways that people really will be able to make a difference. And uh, what are the other things then? There's OpenStack. <laughs> Distribution of an open stack. That's What's interesting, that old Microsoft isn't it? saying? Embrace and extend. I mean, <laughs> do you feel a little bit of that kind of? Well, they're going to embrace and extend open, open stack. Open stack is a, a thin layer, isn't it? You know, it's it's cheap and thin, and uh, Why not support it? <laughs> well, support it. But but it. they're supporting it by putting this huge grain. <laughs> heavy layer <laughs> of all the things on top of it. I'm sure there'll be CIOs there who want to say, I'm supporting OpenStack and do it nicely through VMware. I'm not sure whether 
the people who are going to OpenStack will want to put that amount of software it's like, it's on like top when, of it. It's like when I go to Boston with Dave, these people always want their lobsters cut up for them, they don't want to take the meat out of themselves. <laughs> That's kind of what that is. This is like, here's an OpenStack, you can just do whatever you want with exactly. it. Exactly, I mean, yes, OpenStack's yeah. a heavy lift. I mean, it's yeah. a hard... Oh, no, no, it, it solves the short-term problem. Which is ease of no use. Doubt. Here, ease here's of use. Here's some OpenStack, bang, in. done. Here, here you've done it. But, but The trade-off is bloated software potential. Exactly, yes. I mean, you're going to put, have to put a lot of software on top of that to... Well, that's to going to be their challenge. How can they innovate on that? Do they make or it more module? They, or how can they reduce it? Uh, make it, as you say, more modular, a thinner layer on top, reduce the costs, make, make VMware so, uh, s simpler in itself. And I think the last thing, I think, there were some really some, a whole lot of very good individual uh, announcements uh, at a detailed level. One of the ones they spent a lot of time talking about was um, remote V-motion. V-motion. <laughs> Which is sounds fantastic. That's the holy grail. Holy yeah, grail. Physics. But but you know the speed of light. Speed of light it still exists. <laughs> so what they didn't say was what are the limits of that? You know, how big can you can you do a, a, a large terabyte system and take that several thousand miles? I don't think the answer to that is yes. So they didn't put some constraints on when and well, how that might be used. we talked to some Oracle customers that are using InfiniBand, they're using some other things hmm. to move data sets and replication across them in real time. So there's, sure. there's other solutions, but they're talking about across the globe, right? Yeah, they're, they're, well, it only becomes of interest if you're talking longer distance. Now, sh sure, there's a lot of use of that technology actually within the data center itself, and that will be really, really good. So it's not saying it's bad technology, but the idea that you can do, do it over thousands of miles <laughs> so I got to ask. I got to ask you the question because um, you're you're technical. Um, we were at the Google event, Google Compute uh, Platform Summit, whatever they had. Um, great event, and we we were reading the tea leaves. And Google has their own peering network. They have a lot of dark fiber. Uh, Pat mm -hmm. Gelsinger and mm -hmm. uh, Bill Fathers mm -hmm. are saying the network's the holy grail. What can they do to get out of this Netflix problem? Everyone, and that's what I call the Netflix problem. Because people in the in on on their couch can realize what happens with Netflix. Yeah. Service providers got to traverse yep. the packets across multiple networks. Mm -hmm. It's a pain in the butt. Yep. So why not just own your own network? So that's interesting. Do you think that they will have an opportunity, VMware, to own their own network, either with partnering with service providers like Google and others? Uh, Is it possible? I think they 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 should be uh, they will go down a slightly different route for that. Um, the key is getting things close together that, that matter, that you want to share the data. So if you have a mega data center with VMware or Amazon or vCloud Air or Amazon in it, um, and you can put your key application, outsource your uh, key applications uh, to or co locate those key applications to the same place, now the world becomes a whole lot simpler because you can go locally at, at whatever speed you want and it becomes real. So I think there's going to be increasing uh, by industry mega data centers which are where people are going to put their co-location and their uh, uh, vCloud Air and other vCloud services relevant to that So industry. good announcement for you, you feel good about this? Oh yeah, it's, it's tr a tremendous lot of individually good things. I, um, the only area that I'm in the slightest bit, uh, I mean it's very ambitious as well, <laughs> but there's a lot of I's and T's to cross to, to yeah. get to Getting that. Getting the details. Getting the details. All right, so I got to ask you the fundamental question for the ecosystem, which is a big part of yep. their world, VMware ecosystem. They have their partner exchange going on here this week in San Francisco. What does VMware need to bring to their ecosystem? What, I mean, and what does that ecosystem evolving into, I mean, you got service providers now, enterprises they got locked and loaded in there, clearly a good install base, but what's, what's their ecosystem look like and what do they need to get delivered to them from VMware? Huh. Well, I think they've got, <laughs> that's a trick question. I mean, uh, that's absolutely, a question. <laughs> that's a long question. <laughs> and, uh, You're the burning bush right now, come on, deliver, the, deliver it. <laughs> and if Pat knew the answer to that, he would have told you already, wouldn't he? <laughs> he kind of didn't answer the question. Maybe, does that mean he's... No, well, I, I, I think... The network, the, he said the network. The network, well, I, the network needs to be solved, and I, I, I believe that un, t the way to solve the network is to, is to reduce the impact of the network as much as possible. He's, uh, he's absolutely right. He's got to focus on doing that and getting vCloud Air into it. 
But I think overall, you're looking at an environment which is going to go increasingly towards the cloud. The cloud is not going to be sustain that level of software and that cost of software. You're talking so, about the bloated layers of software. Yeah, the you, bloated you, model cannot survive cloud. That's yes, what that's what, so they have got to come out with a way that's going to help service providers put in the V sphere, the goodness of V sphere, in a, in a much reduced layers of complexity and at much lower costs. And if they solve that problem, then they're in there for the That's long haul. That's what Quentin Hardy was trying to tease out on the panel yeah. around disruption versus legacy, or he didn't associate with legacy, status quo, they're old. Exactly. Game. They have yeah. a big install base. Yeah, exactly. And, they, right. sh and they should service it. They have to, that's where they're going to build <laughs> their money. Okay, this is theCUBE, uh, John Furrier, Dave, David Floyer on the ground in San Francisco covering VMware's biggest release in their history for vSphere. As Pat Gilkin said, VMware's on the march, great earnings, great sales kickoff. Things are pumping, that all, all cylinders pumping. More importantly, they got competition. The competition is out there. David, final word to you. The heat in the kitchen right now for VMware. Is it hot and who's around them? <laughs> it's hot. But the people around them are people like Microsoft with Azure, people like Google, a bit slower, coming up, and a myriad other service providers and software as a service providers who need the lowest cost, cheapest infrastructure to be delivered. And that's where, they, in the long run, they have to, uh, to, to survive. I say no cost structures, not low cost structures is the answer. If they can get to that <laughs> <laughs> marginal cost, it'll be zero. This is theCUBE, keep watching. You're going to see us at VMworld, obviously we'll be there again this year. Uh, obviously we're going to go on the ground at the Partner Exchange. Keep watching SiliconAngle.tv and of course theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, David Floyer, signing off here in San Francisco at VMware's launch. Thanks for watching. <laughs>